Hello and welcome. My name is Chris. My handle is Montevaca, and this is the fourth in my series of Blender tutorials. In this tutorial, we are I'm going to show you how to create a apron using Blender's cloth physics. Um, just quick housekeeping measure. I am using uh, Blender 2.56. I know there is a newer version at the time of this recording. I haven't had a chance to upgrade yet. I do plan to soon. I just uh, haven't had a chance to download it and everything, but uh, just wanted to give you guys a heads up. I know the interface is slightly different in the new in the newer version, but I think uh, from my little bit of experience with it, it's pretty similar in most other respects. So let's get started. Um, to start you out, start us out. We can take a look. This is just a quick model, nowhere near done, but this is what we're going to be using to create an apron on. Um, it's a model I've been working on, again, just just at the beginning phases of uh, being completed. Um, so what we want to do is create an apron that drapes down over his shoulders, down to his crotchal area. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start out by creating a cube. And we'll move it around, move it towards his back. What we're going to want to do is the first step we're going to create a, a ring, almost a belt-like thing, around his ad, abdomen to actually uh, constrain the cloth physics so that it kind of doesn't fly forward on us. Um, it'll be along the lines of a, a tie around the apron, which we can go back in later and create like a string and even like a bow tie on, but this is just largely for the actual cloth physics animation that we want to do. So we're going to get it down to a small little square. We want it kind of thin. Not too thin, but not too thick as well. And let's move it close to his back. We can look. Yeah, that's about right. And Although we can do it without it, I'm going to suggest everybody, uh, while you're making this, to use the mirror modifier. It's just going to save us a lot of time. And I think it's the Y axis that we want the mirror on. Let's see if we go into edit mode and move it. There we go. Actually want to start on this side. Let's go back into object mode, line it up in the middle, so using it. Okay. So now let's go back into edit mode. We're gonna take this uh, face and we're gonna extrude it, E out, extrude it again, E out. Extrude it again slightly, but here we wanna rotate it a bit. Get it about kitty corner like that. And now we're going to want to extrude it again. Here we're going to, oh, whoops. Here we want to pull it more in the, the uh, Z direction. And we'll widen it a bit. Now we're going to rotate the face again so that we're more flat. That should be okay. Wanna maybe scale it down a bit so that it looks more in line with the size of it. Okay, and you know what? I'm gonna pause it here, but uh, if you, I think you guys get the idea, wrap it around the torso until you've got a a loop around the torso. So let me pause it, do that so that we're not wasting time, and I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, so what I've done now is just uh, finished off that loop. And once you guys have, you, it doesn't matter about the gap, we're going to fix that in a moment. We're going to take the mirror modifier and apply it. Oh, sorry, we need to be in object mode. We apply the mirror modifier, and now we go back into edit mode, and now we can start editing the specific faces of the actual mirrored object as well. So. Once we've uh, done that, what we want to do is go back to where we can select vertices and we're going to want to take each of these vertices in the gaps, do Alt-M, which is merge, and we're going to want to merge its center. And do this for each of the gaps, the vertices. 
so that we're closing it up, making it one object, Alt M, center, and then finally on this one, oh, Alt M, center. Uh, one other thing that you want to do before we move on, and I'll do the back off screen. Let's do click on this uh, face that's inside. Since we've merged all the vertices, we don't need a internal face. So we can just hit delete and delete face. And that gets rid of the internal face. So I'm going to pause it, get everything, get this back one fixed up, and then come right back. Okay. Okay, but guys, I'm back. Uh, so now that we've got the ring closed up, what we want to do is let's head back into our object mode and take a look. Our ring is a little bit too wide, so let's scale it down a bit. We want it to fit as snugly to our model as it can without actually overlapping. And what we're basically doing is we're trying to make an apron as close to as an apron we're trying to make a model that looks as close to what an apron would look like without having to apply the clothing modifier to begin with. The clothing modifier, the cloth, sorry, cloth modifier is only to give us the kind of wavy effect. We want it to look as close to an apron before we even do that because then it will actually give us a better effect. So once that's there, this is going to constrain it the apron towards the actual chest of this uh, character. Now we're going to head back into edit mode and what we want to do is we're going to uh, select the f top faces of this ring. Actually, I'm going to turn this off so I don't accidentally select faces I don't want to select. And we're going to do extrude E, pull up, and then pull out. And then we're going to do this again. Extrude E, pull up, pull out. And we're just going to continue to do this and kind of, and try to build an apron out of this shape. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Pause again and come back once that's done, okay? Hey guys, back. So what I've done here now is just created a basic apron shape. Tried to mold it uh, as close to the model as I possibly could. And once we've got that here, I'll show you guys in the edit mode. Kind of small amount of polygons. What we're going to want to do now is go back into object mode. And well, actually edit mode. We're going to select all. We're going to want to subdivide this. It's going to insanely increase uh, the, the actual... Um, number of polygons in it and hopefully make our our cloth uh, modifier that we add to it actually look a lot better. I think that might be enough. Let's see. We'll try it with that and if that doesn't work we're also going to turn on smooth shading just to help that out. Okay. So once we've got a apron that we want to try with the cloth physics we need to select our man come over here to physics and add collision to it. Okay, so it now has collision. So now let's come back here to our, our apron. And what we're gonna wanna do is add a cloth modifier. Um, we're gonna use the modifier. It, it adds it in the, in the actual uh, physics tab where we can add, edit actual um, uh, variables of it which we're going to want to come over here first thing we're going to do is make sure cloth collision is on we're going to do self collision we'll turn out down the distance a bit but uh, we want self collision because this thing's actually not a plane it's actually a thicker object so I think that should be it so now if we run it um, Hopefully my video capturing software should not actual, actually crash. Um, it looks like the actual uh, apron is a little bit, um, I think it's caught on something inside. So what we're going to do is scale it out a little bit. Make sure it's not catching on anything on the actual body. 
Now let's try this again. Okay, hmm. I'm gonna pause it and mess around with it a little bit, and then decide what we what's going wrong. Okay. Okay, guys. Hey, sorry. The uh, the video capturing software was screwing up the baking of the uh, physics animation a little bit. So I've I've already gone ahead and baked it a little bit, and uh, found a frame I kind of like. Normally, what we would do now is take a look and see that okay, our our neck is kind of screwing up the uh, the neck of the the apron, and we'd go back to the original position, edit it a little bit until we got the exact right uh, um, uh, position that we wanted for the apron. Um, but right now I'm going to just go with this. This looks actually okay. Um, the things now that you want to consider, if this is just a blender um, animation that you want to do, you can just keep it as a physics object and that will allow you to possibly turn the object, have it be affected by other types of physics. But if, say, we were going to want to export this to another engine, like a game or something, what we're going to want to do is uh, some, some games don't, some engines aren't going to uh, allow this to just be an animated cloth object. We want it to, to be a, a real mesh. So we're going to come back here to the modifier, and we're going to apply the cloth mesh, which what this does now is the, me the, uh, the mesh of the apron is now fixed at this uh, at, at this uh, frame so we can't run the simulation if we just run it there's no frames it's just that so, but what this also allows us to do is now we can export it and it's just a mesh that's this shape um, we can render it and take a look at this shape the other thing that we want to be what this allows us to do now is since this is one mesh and not a uh, a a animation what we can now do since uh, since this has a sh uh, an insane amount of uh, faces and vertices we can actually come in here and add a decimate uh, modifier if I can find it sorry there we go oh hang on just a second okay guys um so uh, we're not going to be able to add the decimate modifier in this tutorial, but uh, I'll, I'll go into why it's not working. Um, either I was not um, completely thorough when I was creating the apron and left an interior face, which the decimate modifier does not like, or I think it might be these uh, overlapping faces. Uh, since we, since I lowered the distance that allowed um, that, w that it was the the cloth uh, modifier, um, here, let's see, the cloth modifier self-collision. Since I lowered that distance down, I think that allowed these uh, planes to pass through each other. I think that's one of the things that um, that the the decimate modifier does not like when planes pass through each other. Or, I know it's the interior planes that it gets really mad with, but I think that might also be an issue as well. So, but uh, if we were to do that, if we just come here to the decimate, we could uh, change the ratio and what it would do would uh, decrease the number of vertices and allow us to scale down since this is going to be a really high vertex count object. Um, we could do that little bit by little bit, keeping an eye on what, how badly it degrades the actual object. That way we could actually um, get rid of some of the unneeded extra vertices. But um, since I can't show that to you guys, you guys could probably figure that out on your own. But uh, that's the basic uh, basic points. Um, here, I will open up a, another project that I was working on to show you guys what is the end result of something. This is one that I got working that I kind of like. I'm still going to mess around with the actual neck a little bit, but if we render it, I'm thinking that looks pretty good as far as the apron-wise, um, but uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching.